Kelly, this is obviously, obviously a much tougher game than Sunday. Were you guys expecting that with the way Tennessee was, I mean, Kentucky was playing this week? Yeah, I think you have to expect a tough game. Um, you know, they're, they're rolling. It's tournament play. You throw out records. You throw out, you know, the previous score. Obviously for us, uh, you, you don't want to change things, but they're playing different, so you got to be prepared to do that. Um, you know, that was a momentum game for them, um, playing with a, with a lot of momentum and with nothing to lose, to be honest with you. So it's a, it's a good win for us. You used the press in Lexington. It looked like it was a little bit of success, and then here you try it again. It looked like it didn't see as much success. Kind of what you see in that? Yeah, I think they just shifted some people around um, with their attack. Um, they were a little bit more confident, and I think they were a little bit more aggressive. That's what I, you know, we, we wanted to throw it out there and see what it looked like. Uh, they were able to score a bucket or hit a three in the second half with it. So, you know, we, we felt um, we felt better about our, our defense when we were set, not not necessarily off of the you know the turnovers, but the press was. It was okay. Coach, I think Rakia was 14 of 14 from the line. I mean, Alabama kept the door open because they kept missing free throws yeah. last night. And then y'all basically put this game away at the line. Just how key was that? Yeah, 24 26. That's a big number, obviously, to, to get to the free throw line, but then to make them, that was huge. So, other than the final score and telling our team that's the stat that matters, I did compliment them on the, the free throw line um, success. Now, obviously, Rakia had a big part of that. It was the late game already, and then you got a weather delay. I knew it was past your bedtime, even yeah. when it was going to tip, right. and now they made it worse. How do you? What did y'all do? Just wait. I mean, you had to wait even longer. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're sitting on go. We're getting ready to leave and um, get the call that we, we ended up staying at the hotel. So we, everybody said everybody was ready, but just stayed in their rooms um, and it's for about thirty minutes extra. Um, then came over and then. I thought we got here probably a little early, so we watched quite a bit of the of the second half of the LSU and Georgia game. Um, you know, wasn't wasn't how we drew it up, but it's, you know, you got to be flexible. You got to be ready to roll. They're doing the same thing, so. Um, but it's, I mean, I'm telling you, it's a hurry up and wait. We you get to watch all these games, you just want to play, right? And we're so we're sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. So um, it, it was uh, it was good to get on the court. Obviously, both Rakia and Jordan missed this tournament last year, and you know Jordan was on your bench injured. How excited were they to get out there, and, and how excited were you to see them both have such a great night? Yeah, you know it was good to. Um, obviously, you want them on your team. I mean, they're they're two talented players, and and I think they're just taking advantage of the of the time they have with this team, and um, you know they're they're just so competitive. They they love to play. Uh, they love this environment, um, and I, I think they really enjoyed it. LSU uh, rematch, obviously, Saturday. What, what have you got to do in this second game that, that maybe you could clean up from, from Baton Rouge? I, I think the biggest thing for us, the margin for error, is very slim. And that's what we've been talking about all season. When you play in teams like this, you've, your margin for error has got to be very small. And um, that's – and that's – you know your defensive boards that's you know you can't have missed box outs they're going to get some rebounds even when you box out um, you can't have silly fouls you've got to make layups you can't turn the ball over and give them opportunities on the other end um, you've got to execute uh, you have to execute your offense um, so uh, it's, a, it's a lot it's a, there's a lot of things that you can mess up in when you're on the court but we've got to be focused and we have to execute our game plan on both ends of the court Caroline Stripling said the last time she had her ponytail pulled in a game she was in elementary school. Is that, I don't know that I've ever in all my years seen a technical foul on a ponytail I don't, fraction. I don't know that I have either. I, I actually did not see it, but she was mad. She was very upset and glad she said something, obviously, um, to the officials so they were able to review it. Caroline said something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know when your ponytail Yeah, she was, she was not happy. I think in Something that people don't really talk about enough this team is recovering from losing Tamari, having two sophomores who didn't really play a lot last year, have really developed into solid, you know, presences in the post. You know, what can you say about both Jillian and, and Caroline's development, even though, you know, didn't show on stat sheet tonight. <coughs> Had a solid game for you guys. Yeah, you know they, they've been um, they've had great experience this year. It's been it's been wonderful for their development, um, but they've worked hard. I mean, they really work hard. You come in and watch them in practice, and they really get after it. And especially their individual position work. I, I'm, I've always been impressed with how hard they go. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about how much extra Caroline has done since she stepped foot on this campus. I mean, she put in the time, and you know it's paying off. Um, you know they're. 
you know, they're not Tamari, they don't have Tamari strengths, but they can bring other things to the team. And, and I think that's what we're finding from them right now. You know, they can be presences, they can find opportunities on the, on the offensive end. I think both of them are still working, working uh, through what they can do really well for us defensively. How is, oh, is it, Tamari kind of helped them in that? Yeah, I think Tamari's positive voice and just being there for them and always supporting them and giving her advice. Uh, I think it's just a different voice. I think it's a you know it's a, coming from someone different than their coach, but someone that they respect, and I think that's important. Just his first half threes. Just how how big were those? Oh, they were critical. Obviously, um, you know, especially in that second quarter, we didn't score well. Um, you know, so to have her hit those in the first half, I think, you know, it was important. I w would love to have gotten her loose for a couple more in the second half. We just we just didn't get her get get her the ball there, but. Um, you know, she's doing a great job of getting them off quick, looking for it, um, you know, and we'll, we'll keep looking for her as well. Kentucky played in this tournament pretty much like people had expected Kentucky to play in the regular season. I know you're close with Kyra, just, I mean, did you, I know you don't have much time to talk, but I mean, we did, what did you say to her after the game? I mean, Kentucky made a heck of a run here. Yeah, they did. I, I didn't get to talk to her a whole lot after, and, and obviously I know she was super excited about you know, getting the, the first two wins and having this opportunity, but also um, just watching that. You knew they they were going to come in fearless. They had nothing to lose. Um, going to play hard. And when you have a team like that that you have scores, they have three guards that can legitimately score the ball at a at a pretty elite level. It makes them dangerous. Speaking of guards, Final LSU's question. guards played very well tonight. How do you go into tomorrow? Obviously, Angel Reese is a problem, but then you also have those guards who can score like that. What's going to be your defensive game plan? <sighs> defensive game plans, to, it's, it's tough, obviously. You look at what they did today. They shot the heck out of the ball today. So you've got to be out on the perimeter, but uh, you just don't want to have one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the paint as well. Um, you want to be able to find some opportunities. Uh, find some help there. So, you know, we're, we're going to have to be very strategic, uh, very strategic about how we're guarding. Um, you, you can't let them get loose in transition. It's got to be, um, uh, you got to take care of the basketball so you're not playing from behind in transition because they'll, they'll put a lot of points on the board if they're, they're scoring in transition as well. All right. Thank you very Thanks. much.